Greetings, that kind of nerd podcast listener. Hey, listen, real quick. If you're not driving, I'd like to take a moment to have you do something really easy. I would love for you to take the That Kind of Nerd podcast survey, okay? It's 10 questions, so it's not very long. And we just want to know really basic stuff. How many podcasts have you listened to? Is there a particular day that you listen to it? Do you trust us as podcasters to bring you information and then just general thoughts on the show? Um, it's really easy. We use the website SurveyMonkey, so if you're familiar with them, you got to know their layout. It is 100% anonymous, so if you got something that you need to tell us uh, and it's not you know favorable, that's fine. We're not going to hold it over anybody. We definitely want to know what we can do to make the show better. If you're not a person who likes to do those online surveys, you can have your beautiful voice on the podcast with us. And all you have to do is call 484-373-4119. This way your voice can be on the podcast. So that way you don't have to listen to me, Brian, and Josh all the time. You can listen to you. So again, if you're not driving, quickly pause this. Go ahead and do the uh, the quick survey in the show notes or call 484 484- Three seven three four one one nine. Tell us what you think we should talk about, or just give us some general feedback about the show. Thank you so much for your time while we do this, uh, and I'm not going to keep you any longer. Let's get on with the show. Brian, I didn't notice your Mister Robot haircut. It looks nice. Brian got a Mister Robot haircut. Thank you. You kind of look, I guess, from my tiny window, it looks like Mister Robot. Yeah, like, I like it. Like, like Christian Slater. No, like Rami Malek, I guess. Yeah. All right, fine. Don't take a compliment. I, I am, I'm taking the compliment. No, thank, no, thank don't you. take it. You're not allowed to anymore. No, I, I took it. Your it's, it's mine. You already gave it. It's you mine. You can't have it. You can't have no, it. No, I already took it. It's not yours. Took it, applied it to myself, it's, and now... It's you know, not here. yours. It's not yours. No, nope, it's going to someone else. So, hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. So um, the internet was kind of kind to us and, and gave us some nice nuggets of stuff to to review, and we got some feedback from some fans about a couple things. So I'm pretty darn excited to to get the show on the road. So uh, let's just start it off. Let's just start with what the heck happened on the internet that took it over for a little bit, and that is the new Batman versus Superman Dawn of Justice trailer. Didn't really take it over. You don't think the internet was like talking about this for like? I, I, I think the, the normal places we're talking about this. Let's put it this way. Uh, Captain America Civil War broke uh, records as the most viewed trailer on YouTube in one day with 61 million views. And Superman, Batman didn't come near that. <laughs> what, so, were, what, what's it at? What's what? Batman versus Superman on YouTube. I didn't, I didn't even watch it on YouTube. I, I, I don't know uh, how many views it's got. All I'm reading is that Captain America is 61 million in one day. And so... So uh, hold on. Uh, so I'm pulling it up on YouTube as of the time of this recording, which is uh, Friday, December fourth. It has nine million seven hundred and thirty one thousand seven hundred and sixty six. And you're saying, I'm saying, Civil War. I read Civil War did sixty one million. Now you're going to make me look it up. It could be true. Yeah, sure. I know it's true. I'm, I'm not doubting it. I just I see. Well, which trailer? Because I mean, I guess it's it's pretty subjective when you say the trailer. Yeah, there's a couple different the, the trailers. official trailer, the the one that was released by Marvel. Yeah, but it's posted by a number of different places. Right, that's too. what I'm talking. Well, yeah, about. Yeah, but for example, for example, the the trailer on the thatkindnerd dot com is still a YouTube trailer. It's not like we're getting credit for the the traffic hits. YouTube yeah, I does. think I think they're I taking see 35 million views. Yeah, but I, I think they're taking the the sum of the multiple oh. posts from different people. Of now the I understand. Now I understand. So 61 the, million views in one day. I wasn't aware at all that this was going to be the shit on DC portion <laughs> of the I, podcast. I, I, listen, I thought, I, I thought for sure. I'm not shitting on DC. When, when, when we said, you know, we got to talk about this trailer. Just, you know, the trailer's pretty hot that we would go, Hey, this, this trailer, this is hot shit. And Brian would go, it's a flaming bag of hot shit. I shit on it. <laughs> and Civil War I, I is said, better. I said it took over the internet. What a great thing. And Brian's, listen, for the first time ever on this podcast, the Brian's, the one, shitting on, the Brian's the one shitting on DC. Until we get to the comments and what we really think about it. Look, so here's here's the thing. Here, yeah, here's let's the get thing to the thing. About this trailer. I really enjoyed the trailer. It just felt like 
and I don't know if you two felt the same way. It felt like the tone was a little off. Yeah. Like, like they slapped it together last minute because Captain America's tra- trailer dropped just last week. I find it very convenient that they all of a sudden have a new trailer a week after Captain America debuted their trailer. I, I think, surprisingly. I, think <laughs> I will we go. We need it. Can we get can we can we not mention Civil War for the rest of this particular conversation only because obviously they have to compete and we know that but I don't I need you to like filter out that emotion Brian and tell us what you thought of the actual trailer I I thought the trailer was good besides the fact that the tone felt a little off um it, it you got a lot more story there's the big reveal at the end Doomsday is is in this and a creation of Lex Luthor that the three of them are going to have to fight. So I, I think that's awesome. And the, it, the comic book fan in me is extremely excited about that. Uh, there's some little Easter eggs and stuff in there that I'll go into later, but I, I, I ultimately, I enjoyed the trailer. I, I think this movie is going to be good. I, you were happy I'm with excited. Doomsday. You were happy with Doomsday. He looks good. The only thing, I mean, he doesn't have heat vision, but that's fine. Do whatever you want to do. Well, right. I'm but he assuming- created him from Zod. I'm assuming, yeah, right, yeah right. I'm assuming he... The th- first one was origins. created by a baby that was banged off of a bunch of rocks <laughs> yes. in outer space. Right. Yes, exactly. Max Landis, yes, it was. And since, and since you can't do that in a, in a movie, um, him being created by <laughs> he Zod just, and he having just, that... He just grabbed him and he punched every baby until a baby <laughs> survived the punching. Right. Yes. That's, that's oh, true. man, I can't even get that. I can't even get any other Genesis story. I, it's not believable anymore I, now that I've heard Max Landis. I, I was talking to somebody else about the trailer, too, at work. I just bumped into him, and I was like, yeah, you know, it looks pretty cool. You know, it's nice to see that he wasn't uh, made by babies being thrown out and thrown on rocks. And they're like, right. <laughs> what? And I was like, I'm so sorry. I, so, I CJ, <laughs> thoughts, really? Are okay, you going to are you going to take a giant dump on it? No, no, no. Let, let me let me do this. I'm going to abstain from my opinion to read that of a fan. Um, <clears throat> our, our a fan uh, left a comment on the website. Uh, it was under money bone. And it says, uh, OK, I watched it again. And I understand that this is a different universe, and I think it does look awesome. But getting cheesy lines from Batman's Ben Affleck is hard to accept. Wonder, what? Wo- Wonder Woman is hot, but her presence just might look stupid on the big screen. The lasso of truth compels me to say I'm worried this movie could suck. Like, when you get over the fact that all these characters are going to be on screen together, you could be left with a pretty shitty movie. I hope I'm wrong. Uh, I, I you can be and are wrong. Tend to agree with Moneybone. Here's why. I am I am extremely worried, as cool and flashy as this trailer looked, that they are trying to fit too much into one movie. Absolutely. You have Batman versus Superman. You have Wonder Woman, who we still don't... There's speculation as to why she's around, but we don't really know why she's even there to begin with. Mm-hmm. Aquaman is supposed to be in it. Doomsday and Lex Luthor. And if you, if you watch that trailer closely at about the two-minute mark, there's that scene in the desert where they're all being attacked by these like winged creatures almost. That is so, probably go ahead. Uh, no, no, go ahead. Finish your thought. I That's probably a nod to another DC villain called so, dark side. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. The, so there's so, so much, there's re- way too much. It's somebody else, problem somebody else this. pointed this out to me and it was a, another fan. Um, it was our friend Steve uh, at work and he had said that um, the Batman in the in the jacket and under underground with um, with Superman, it it really seems off. And they're like, "That's so weird. Why does it seem so off?" He looked at the merchandise for the movie, and that's no, uh, sold as the Nightmare Batman. So thinking that it could be a dream or a side effect of a of a villain. No. Cause no, him to have stupid. this perspective. Is that I mean, it would have to be nobody's bowing down to Superman. No one's bowing down to Superman. Never gonna happen. Um, That's only that, in that Bruce is, Wayne's head. Absolutely, it's only in his name. Spe- speculation is that uh, Doomsday is the result of Lex Luthor trying to clone Superman, and that that Superman that everyone's bowing down to is actually his success at making a clone. See, I just I thought that the Doomsday would be trying to bring Zod back to life, and you know, no, I think he's Doomsday. just trying to make the ultimate weapon to take out Superman, and who can don't he was the only person who can take out Superman. Doomsday or Superman himself. All right. So I, I got to say two things. The first one is this. You, not you, Brian, and quite a few other people have this lens through which you view, say, Marvel movies, things like that. And and you expect quality. And I, I, I understand why. And then 
Ant-Man comes out and everybody lowers their expectation and goes, oh, well, that's what we expected it to be. You know, shitty. So, you know, we're fine with it. But nobody's, everybody's expecting this DC movie to stand up to the best of the Marvel movie. And it can't. There's no way it can't. Hold on. It can't. So I, I'm not saying low expectations. I'm saying you can't expect it to be this the the Avengers. It's it's just not going to be at this. I point. don't have high expectations for it, but I am worried that they're trying to do too much. It's the same thing that made Spider Man three and X Men three such a piece of crap. Is that they and tried the, to fit too much in two and a half. The second hours. thing that I had to say was somebody pointed out that they didn't they didn't like the Batman holding you know holding a weapon type of picture and that's not batman and it happens all the time right as a matter of fact when you said dark side that's one of the times he used weapons yeah no yeah and doomsday he's He's going to use a weapon against doomsday i I get it i get it i'm just saying that those are the two things i had to say that you know there were some naysayers out there look i thought i thought bruce wayne i thought affleck plays a great bruce wayne a great Bruce Wayne. Absolutely. I actually agree with you on this. Um, and I was very entertained by that. I'm I'm loving the, the fights that are being set up, and I'm loving that it seems like at the end of the movie they stop fighting each other and band together and, and form the justice. So League. my my uh, initial concern was exactly this. I don't you know, I was concerned about the premise and blah blah blah. And obviously it's on record, we're not gonna rehash it. I will say this. I really enjoyed the scene of Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne meeting and talking, and that set. I love that. I thought that was yeah. great. Uh, I love the setup for the fight that's going to come for Doomsday. I, not so much, you know, Batman and Superman fighting. It was the the Doomsday fight. It was was awesome. I really wish though that they would have saved Doomsday for the movie and not shown it in a trailer. Well, great. I think it would have been great. Other than great. that, listen, I actually liked this trailer. I still have concerns about the movie, but this trailer is giving me what I the, want from this the movie. The Doomsday reveal is what Brian was talking about, right? Where they had to do something big. They had That's, to. That's had to. I, You're I, absolutely I agree. right. I just the Doomsday reveal, CJ, normally you wouldn't get that, but they had to do something big. Nobody why isn't why why haven't we talked yet about Eisenberg and how awesome he, he Listen, that the the first thirty seconds of that trailer where it's just Clark and Bruce and they're kinda egging each other on. Love it. Oh well, you know, what do you think of this Batman? He seems like a psycho. Well Do not it, pick a fight with this person. Yeah. yeah. And Eisenberg showed that that scene was great. Fantastic. And, and listen, the trailer overall was great. It showed you mm-hmm. everything that you wanted to see. All That's what I really wanted cool. to hear from you, Brian. It did. It showed you all sort. It showed you every character. Showed you all sorts of cool, badass fight scenes. Wonder Woman looks awesome. They all look cool standing next to each other. I am just worried that it's too much and yeah. something's going to suffer. It, it's you know it, it. Every time they try to do this, you get a Spider Man three, and we all know how everybody <laughs> feels about Spider Man three. No, I'm, I'm that's sorry. he's absolutely right on. I, I, I love, you know, that's a great analogy, Brian. I love those movies, but Spider Man Three suffered because they tried to fit too much in one film. They tried to shoehorn in another villain. They tried, and it, it seems like they're just like it seems like Wonder Woman has no place being there. Um, and the speculation is that this her solo movie actually takes place before Batman Superman, which I don't know why yeah. you would do that because that's just going to confuse fans anyway. But <laughs> the 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 rumor is that. Wonder Woman, her solo movie, which comes out next year, is her fighting Ares. Ares is, is going to try to like use this sword to bring about war on Earth. And at the Who end, the he hell loses is Ares? it. Ares is the Greek god of war. Yeah, I, I know that. Like, does he actually exist? Like, yeah, we're okay with in Greek, the Wonder Greek Woman gods universe. being cool? All right. I'm just, I'm just, let, I, I had no zero about Wonder Woman. I just want to be the filter of the person who they, has no idea. They all exist in her universe. Okay. But the, 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 the rumor is that at the end, he loses this sword and that that's what she's doing in Gotham. She's trying to find it. So she, we're going to show up halfway through a story, in, if that's true. We're halfway through a story with Wonder Woman. We have no idea why she's there because we haven't seen a Wonder Woman movie. And we're just going to kind of slip her in. We're going to slip Aquaman in because Aquaman is in this movie. It's just, it, it seems like too much. And that's I- what I'm worried about. Everything the, everything about the trailer was awesome. The trailer, if, listen, the trailer is a standalone thing of a trailer to, to hype a movie. Did its job, but I I, I agree with Brian's concerns and you know, the Spider Man three analogy is right on. Uh, so uh, listen, I, I'm excited for it. The trailer was great. I'm re- I'm really again. I, I said this the first time, and I'll keep saying it. I'm so hope I'm wrong. 
I just want to be wrong. And when I am, you can throw confetti in the air and eat ravioli. It's your party. Cry if you want to. A, what? And yeah. B, you guys crushed my dreams tonight. First of all, <laughs> wouldn't the confetti get like all up in the ravioli? That no, would be like, well, how would you, how He you... throws Parmesan confetti. There you go. That works. <laughs> he throws Parmesan confetti. I so like that. So, so Patent okay. penning, by the way. Patent penning. Uh, okay. So, all right. I appreciate Money Bone for, for throwing in his, his two cents into the rain, and I, I uh, like his perspective. So thank you so much for, for your comment on uh, thatkindofnerd.com. And fans, don't be shy to leave a comment. As you can see, you can get on the podcast. Your voice can be heard. So um so let's let's bring let, let let's get to the next topic here. There was a list um that came out that had uh the list of Marvel of I'm sorry of Netflix's original series, kind of putting them in order. Josh, you found this list. Where, where, tell tell me a little about it. Um, so I, it was it was something that I came up one morning on Thrillist, and you know every so often I find a good list on there, and and I, I want to bring it up, and almost without fail. I immediately disagree with most of the list on Thrillist. With this everything. Is, this is right. This is a few times now. And uh, it was written by Kevin Alexander for Thrillist.com. Uh, posted, uh, you no, know, two weeks ago, right before, uh, well, November 20th, I think it was. Um, he, it goes through all of the Netflix original shows. And, and he has judged them and put them in order and explained why. And my big problem when I before I get to anything else, mm-hmm. I can't believe this dude puts House of Cards at number thirteen. 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 Isn't that ridiculous? With Lily Hammer at twelve. I watched four episodes and bailed. It was awful. And above 13? Peaky Blinders, which I disagree with too. Well, Peaky Blinders is amazing. I, and not, I'm fine with not it. Not better than the, House of Cards. No, I'm fine with it yeah, near the top ten, but not better than House of Cards. Yeah. The so so hold on let, let, before you rail yeah. can we at least give people the the order here so I mean and let's just do the, the like the top let's 10 let's do the or, top like 10 well let's I'll tell you what I'm I'm not going to read cuz I don't even know what some of these shows are but I'll I'll read a few they have Hemlock Grove at 22 the next show that I can recall is Daredevil at 17 yeah that needs to be higher Wet Hot American Summer first day of camp at 15 which was unwatchable uh, I already mentioned House of Cards at 13, Peaky Blinders at 11, and then BoJack Horseman at 9, which is I an animated that. show I that I haven't heard great it. things about. Um, it's Bloodline Will, it, at, sorry, Blood, BoJack Horseman is Will Arnett. I mean, he's pretty okay. Awesome. Bloodline at 8, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt at 7, Jessica Jones at 6, Orange is the New Black at, uh, there's no 5, Orange is the New Black at 4. <laughs> Narcos at three, Happy Valley at two, and at number one, I have, unless this guy hangs out with Aziz Ansari, Master of None, which I've watched. It's, it's, you know, funny, cool, poignant sometimes even, but uh, it's not a top ten, I don't think. So I, I think, I think Josh needs to go to Thrillist headquarters and not only talk to them about their <laughs> rankings of television shows and movies, but the numbers. Them numbers. <laughs> This is the second True. list that we've read off of this website that is missing a number. Maybe they put maybe they put a five in there and we're like, oh wait, Netflix didn't. That wasn't a Netflix original. It's just on do they, Netflix. Do they know Microsoft Word will actually automatically do that for them? <laughs> you can do it in descending order and uh, whatever. You want to okay, do. all right. Let's not take a shit on Thrillist. They are obviously uh, are way better than we are anyway. And look, we, I I love the site, but I mean, he's right about about the numbers in the list. That's kind of so. It just, it just bugs me. First off, okay, let's put House of Cards where it belongs, and let's move let's move uh, Master of None off of the number one list, and put House of Cards there. Yeah. And did anyone watch Happy Valley? No, no. Okay, I, I think that goes off the two bloodline. I think that goes off two. Daredevil goes in number two. Um, what what Orange is the Narcos in three? I think that's a good spot for that. Yeah, Orange is the New Black. I think can stay on four. No, I'll replace it with Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones, and then Orange is the New Black. Interchangeable, as far as I'm concerned. But I would, I would put, I would move Peaky Blinders up closer. I haven't seen half these shows. I didn't even know half these shows existed. I've heard of Bloodline. I've heard really good things about Bloodline. Um, Josh has been bugging me to watch Peaky Blinders. Yep. Um, 
Peaky Blinders is really good. I'm serious. You I've should really some, watch that show. I've heard some crappy things about Master of None from Aziz Ansari fans. Yeah. Who were just like, yeah, it's not that great. No, well, that's because Aziz Ansari fans aren't necessarily, you know, like Louis C.K. fans or even like La- – I would put this on par – at some points with Curb Your Enthusiasm, it's sh- it's a show that makes you uncomfortable watching it. It's it's a it's good that way, but it's also show a show that has real some really cool moments, and uh, you know not not funny, just cool moments that you know you can't really put into a comedy sort of atmosphere. It's a good show. It's it's nothing. It's nothing like. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, it's nothing like I've seen from him before. I mean, that's that's sometimes a good thing. Right. That's what I'm saying, though. As far as his fans are concerned, it's very different. It, the, the line that they're putting, even in the Thrillist article, is that has this Louis C.K. feel to it. And uh, listen, I, I understand on Z, I'm sorry, in the, in the comedy world is a pretty big royalty factor. But no one did a show the way that Louis C.K. did Louis. And I don't think it's fair to ever try to put anyone up to that because, I mean, he writes it, directs it, edits, and funds it. I mean – it's it's just not fair to put that much I think, pressure on I think they were inside. really more just talking about how it was uncomfortable. Comfortable? That's still – there's a million other shows you could draw that analogy to. Whatever. I, again, I'm shitting on Thrillist. My bad. But uh, listen, the, the, this, the, the, the most impressive thing about this list is that how much of this is original content. I mean the fact that it's all original content from Netflix is something that right. blows my mind. Right. Just the sheer power of this. This should really show people – that you know Netflix and Hulu and and you know Amazon uh, Instant Video is becoming like we've talked about a platform. And they just keep adding to it. They just keep adding to it. And you know what? Most of this content, while we may not agree with its position, most of it is not bad. It's just maybe not in the same line that we would put some of traditional TV. Mm-hmm. Um. And, and seriously, I, I know I'm beating a dead horse, Brian. Seriously, watch Peaky Blinders. It's great. Okay. Mike Nasser told um, me to watch it, and I I owe him a. Like debt of gratitude. I like everybody in it. I will, I'll watch it. Just not right now. Did Did anyone get intrigued enough to investigate one of these shows that you've never heard of? No. Um, I've always wanted to see Sense8. That was on my list, too. I mean, I, I, it was always on my mind before this list, but I mean, I, I definitely want to check it out. It seems like an interesting concept. It, I'm only afraid of it being a little bit like Alphas. I'm afraid of, you know, at one point actually falling in love with this with this show and then having it ripped away from me and I cry. Yeah, right. but Netflix isn't beholden to any sort of execs or studio or anything. They, yeah, they want to wrap it up, they'll wrap it up. They're beholden to streams and that's really not a big, I don't think that's getting the numbers. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. I they don't have get thir- They have 13 episodes to make you love it, and if they can't, they may never do it again. Marco Polo, I heard, was a pretty awesome show. I've heard some good stuff about that. I've heard some bad things about I it, I heard too, it's it kinda- also an amazing pool party game. Yeah. <laughs> yes, as a, as a matter of fact, it is. Uh, which makes me wonder, where is Netflix's fish out of water? Um, I'm assuming that was a joke. No? Okay, cool. I don't get it. Yeah, when... When you play Marco Polo and someone gets out of the pool and then you catch them by telling them that they're a fish out of water. Now. No, oh, I just say, get back in the pool, like, you dirty cheater. I just like cheater. saying it, yeah. You've never actually played the Marco pool. Polo. Yeah, see, it's fun, but I know I don't know what you actually do. Oh. I'm just sad about uh, that. We're, we're not going to explain how to play Marco Polo and to you. That, that time's no, passed for you. Yeah, we're, and, I'm good. And by the way, since we're speaking of Netflix real quick, my wife finally finished Jessica Jones tonight. Really? Ooh. And is like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. David Tennant, no. I was hmm. like, don't worry. I think we're okay. So she enjoyed the show, and I'm sure a lot of other people have. We still haven't heard people's comments or feedback about it, so please. people are still watching it. Right. Paul says, Paul says he's not listening to the podcast right now because he hasn't finished it. Oh, right. Well, I'll stop spoiling it. Then, yeah, stop spoiling it. Okay. God, CJ, fine. why do you have All to right. ruin everything? Because that's what I do on The Ruiner of Things. But you see, Josh is not in his head in agreement. You should have True your own story. theme song. No, I shouldn't have my own song. Slash someone write me a song. CJ Mellon, <laughs> moment ruiner. Do-do-do. CJ moment. <laughs> moment killer. Anywho. <laughs> Anyone have anything else they want to add to this list? 
No, they don't have There's any more to original. No, I mean, like anything they want to add about the topic. God yeah, damn it, I, I yeah. want to add. I want to add the Aaron Paul Ghost Rider to that list. Yes, can yes. We, Where is that, that? By the way, it's have you pitched? Up, have you read uh, the script? It's apparently it's completely stalled. They stalled production. Everything stalled. <laughs> what? <laughs> what happened? Aaron Paul's too busy doing know. T-Mobile commercials. <laughs> they promised me, and they let me down. Although those T-Mobile commercials are genius. I, but I mean, seriously, how do they know that you're streaming content? Like a movie or something. That's that's a little worrisome. <laughs> Completely off topic. It, you want the answer? I know the answer. Would you like the answer? I don't. I don't need the answer because it's going to be very technical and no one's going to care. It, it, metadata. Packets. The Packets word is metadata, and that's it. Yeah. That's it. Simple. You're Easy. metadata. Anyway, I'm not going to get into. We'll talk about privacy and stuff like that someday. We really will. You always want to talk about privacy. Yet you I think everybody's. It's- a fantastic topic, but it's so boring that you guys would even fall asleep to it. But super boring. I'll make it my make my own podcast next time and do it myself. I don't need you. I don't need <laughs> Brian, you. Can you, Brian. Brian, imagine this. Imagine CJ sitting at the mic talking for an hour about privacy. <laughs> I will. I didn't say it was an hour long installment. I think fifteen you minutes for another person. You would have people boring their ears out with their Q. It'd be like NPR. No, hold on, Brian. Uh, let, let me let me stop you right there, Josh. Josh, Q-tips are not made to actually go into your ear. Please read like, the packaging. Like David Tennant ordered to you to dig into your brain with a Q-tip. It's not. I just want to say Q-tips are not made for the inner ear canal. So please, please be careful. You're not made for the inner ear canal. Four out of five ear doctors say they're fine. So anywho, <laughs> let's talk about this. This is a pretty awesome thing. Josh found a link at uh, Polygon.com, and if you're not familiar with Polygon, you should definitely check them out. Uh, Polycon. They, yeah, thank you. Again, if I make a mistake, you could just let it go. No, I Polygon. can't. Polygon. I didn't, I didn't find that link. Uh, who did? I don't know. It was in Pocket. I figured you did. I, I didn't do this. Some, well, some then mystery Pocket, person. Pocket is, is tracking what we put in there and suggesting things, <laughs> just which automatically is pretty, excellent. This is, goes right back into your privacy This should argument. go into my privacy podcast yep, right there. There it is. Sometimes there it's it really is. good. You Sometimes can, you can, you the can pros and cons of privacy. How Pocket suggesting this article is a violation of your privacy that you find so <laughs> cool that we have to talk about it on the air. So what what I found when I logged into Pocket uh, the other day was that I thought CJ dropped an article in there about what are your favorite games of all time? And I thought, hey, I want to talk about my favorite games of all time. So I opened the article, but it wasn't about what are actually my favorite games. It was about a fun tool to help you figure it out here is the cool thing about this tool. It takes games, puts them on either side of a, of a little like hot or uh, not multiple choice. Yeah. Hot or not type of thing. And you say, if you like that game better than the other game or in the middle, I feel the same about both games, right? Now that's the cool thing. So I did this exercise and it took, um, probably the better part of 20 minutes for me. Same thing. Took me 20 minutes as well. What what I did get out of it though, it's so a, fucking good. Was a list that was pretty accurate in in my in my top ten CJ yeah, so me from too. from ten to one. I've got Tetris, uh, I've got Super Mario Galaxy, I've got I'm sorry Zelda, uh, Majora's Mask, Tetris, Super Mario Galaxy, Mario Kart Eight, GoldenEye 007, Super Mario sixty four, Ocarina of Time, A Link to the Past, Super Mario World. And then Super Mario Brothers 3 is my number one. Good list. Here's a here's my top ten. And, and you know what? I could, I've been agonizing over a list like this. And this is right. This read my mind. Number ten is Portal. Number nine is Zelda uh, Majora's Portal Mask. Portal is such a great game. Right? Number eight is Perfect Dark. Number seven is Mario 64. Six, Smash Bros. Melee. Uh, number five is Skyrim. Number four, GoldenEye 007. Number three, Ooh. Pokemon Red and Blue. Number two, Oblivion. And number one, Zelda Ocarina of Time. And again, it's we like didn't they know you. We didn't pick these games. They just Brian, ask you which games do you cool, like? This one or this one? And it it's did like it for any, me. Yeah, there's like say like any psychological test, those little things you take. I mean it, it it's three hundred and thirteen battles, basically. So you put two games up against the other and you say you know, Chrono Trigger or Shovel Knight. Well, I see for me the I answer no is idea. I I feel the same way about both because I have no idea what they are. Exactly. You don't My know what own, Chrono Trigger is? No, man, I don't know what Chrono. So look, some I had of to these Google games, it because I was like, maybe I like this game and I just don't know. I don't right, remember it. Look, I have no games idea. games tied for a rank of ninety on my list. 
right? The 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 games in the nineties: Arkham City, Portal, Pokemon Gold, Silver, World Ends with You, Metal Gear Solid Four, Assassin's Creed Two, and Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. You know why? I feel the same way about all those games. I like them a little bit more than other stuff, and really not at all otherwise. I have like fifty and seventy two. Right, ridiculous. right, right. Yeah, right. My same. The same thing. I have an argument. Hundred. It's one hundred twenty eight games. I uh, I agree entirely almost with my top 50. Most of the games that I played growing up aren't on here, right? So right. my top 10 is super Nintendo heavy. Like I'm talking just for all the systems, 8-bit, Super, and 64, and Wii because they don't have any sports games for any console on here. And yeah, all, they have like, none. All not, of not my even favorite games. Right, so like some of the – like Warcraft 3, that wasn't really a console game for me. That was a PC game, and I love the campaigns. So that's in my top 15. But like, you know, Halo, they made it in there, Sonic, Metroid. But like all of those, when you start getting into games with weird names like Shadow of the Colossus, I have no oh idea. You don't know God, Shadow of the Colossus? That game is amazing. No, Dude, that I, game is what, great. I, Dragon Age, Dark Souls, Shenmue. I have no idea yeah, what these Shenmue, are. Shenmue, I have no idea what that is. One of them was a mobile game. Kingdom Kingdom Hearts, I have no idea. You do, because we talk about we it. We talk about don't it. Don't lie. Uh, I, I really don't know what Kingdom Hearts is. Tales of Symphonia. Tales of Symphonia is also a great game, too. Xenogears. I have no yep. idea what any of these games are, but I love, I love, 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 love the thought process behind this. It's so good. And I mean it. It's 128 games that you you pit up against one another. It took me 313 times to get a list. What I'd love to do for the fans is we are going to include a link to this this system because I don't want to call it a game. I want to the or quiz this system uh, on the show notes and the website. Josh, if you're comfortable with it, I'd love to publish maybe like our top 50 games. And just kind of say a little, a little bit of you know, do we agree with this? Do we you know disagree with some of this stuff? Yeah, whatever. And and then I would love to hear the fans hear what you guys get. Uh, again, you don't have to be a huge gaming nerd. Some of these games I didn't even know either. Uh, but I man, I really agree with my. Top do you guys 50. live under a rock? Under a rock, Brian. What the hell are these under, games, dude? There are 125 games, and I can't I remember every JRPG that comes across my board. I can't do it. It you don't like JRPGs, like, and my top ten is flawed because it has Super Mario Galaxy two in there, and I must have answered at some points that I like it. But I has there ever been a Mario Galaxy two? Yes, there has. Yeah, I've never seen it. Well, but yeah, I must have there. answered a bunch of times that I like it. It's very strange. It's great. It, it does. It does indeed exist. So, so before Brian has an aneurysm by us listing the names at games that we don't know, please, Brian, take take this list, publish your list as well. Do please, fans, go to that kind of nerd Find the link to this system. Uh, take the quiz. Share your results. Um, you know, it, it comes out in a list that you can easily put on a Google Doc or Excel Excel spreadsheet. I can't speak today. Uh, just share with us or tweet us uh, some of your impressions of of this. Uh, system at that kind of nerd on twitter or find us on facebook and just tell us a little bit about what you think this is really cool uh i highly suggest that you take this quiz and just like josh said it's about 15 20 minutes um the reason i think it took me a little longer was i was passionately debating between a couple of games a couple of times yeah here's my problem with lists like these like i'm looking at these two i'm like but, but i love them both then i can't right I can't if just you pick if you one. say if you say i feel the same way They'll come up again later in a different I, arrangement. I, I It'll be fun. I'm I, telling you, I'm, I, telling it's, you. I'm really seriously. It's it's oh. trust the system. It's really good. You'll come back to and it even tells you what percentage you are into the sorting, which I didn't you're, notice until later. You're into the sorting. I am into the sorting. Gryffindor. <laughs> okay, sorting hat. I, yeah, when you I said got that. you're into the sorting. I thought I, I am into the sorting. You totally are. Hufflepuff. I knew you were going to say Hufflepuff yeah, next. We, I was we like, what's the waiting. nice house he's going to name? I'm going to shut up and wait. Hufflepuff. Slytherin. Next. I like the way he says them. He's so proud of saying Gryffindor. <laughs> and he's not proud of saying Hufflepuff or <laughs> Slytherin. I don't think you're allowed to be proud to say Hufflepuff. Well, I, here's the thing. He's the sorting hat for the whole goddamn school. Right. 
Right. And 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 again, with Dumbledore, the, you, you've seen the cartoons where it's like, damn it, Dumbledore, Gryffindor can't always win. <laughs> right. But and they always do. And you just kind of feel bad. You feel bad for all of the other not so much for Slytherin, but for Ravenclaw, you feel bad. So there was the uh, Chris Hardwick from the Nerdist podcast was like, I have a theory about the houses of Harry Potter that Gryffindor is kind of like the jocks and the popular kids because they win the house cup. They go for the Quidditch matches. They have Harry Potter. They have the famous guy. So they, they kind of have that. Slytherin is the uh, assholes that are you're stuck with, the, the douchebags who, who don't go anywhere. Ravenclaw is uh, the nerdy guys who study a whole lot. And then Hufflepuff is full of your stoners and your, your what losers. If, what if the reality is closer to what Snape remembers about the guys from Gryffindor? Which is, they were the assholes, and he was constantly picked on and outcast. It's it's pers- it's perspective. Well, that's what I'm saying. So maybe you know Chris Hardwick should back it back it down. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Well, the man's not here to defend himself and his million subscribers on podcasts, and let's here's, not get on his bad side. Here's here's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, I, I just I just think when I think about this, and I I, I don't even know how we got on the topic otherwise, other than I screamed Gryffindor. Just let the, it happen. The uh, the Sorting Hat should be absolutely agnostic in this case like just well, it kind of is isn't it no because it goes gryffindor like it's so proud to put someone in gryffindor and when he says slytherin he just doesn't like you can tell it's disdain nobody it. likes slytherin and then hufflepuff he's just like they're a bunch of stoners she's a hufflepuff they're over there i think it's literally just they're the over on the grass too. they can't be bothered they all brought picnic baskets <laughs> oh god we actually don't even need to talk to him again until the winter formal. They'll still be there until there's snow on the ground. Does Hufflepuff go to class or are they just stay in the dorms <laughs> making Cheetos out of their wands? And you know what what's funny? Do? You say that and my mind flashes on an NFL commercial right now where Marshawn Lynch walks in at the back and goes, boss, I've been here the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you just did to Hufflepuff in my brain. They are Marshawn Lynch in the back of class. Bro, I've been here the whole time. <laughs> You know what though? If if Brian was in was in any any house, I think he'd be in Ravenclaw. And because you know why? I know they like to shape into animals, but there's not a lot of cats. Oh and remember that his apartment, right? The cat to male ratio is rather low. I think he'd fit in just well, just just perfectly there. Oh my god! I think you fit in great. Is that too forced? I don't care. I'll let it happen. <laughs> So, Josh, let's talk about your road trip that you just took and a fantastic stop that you made. A road trip. He's like, let's talk about your road trip. It was actually just my commute to work. You could have just, again, could have just let it ride. It sounds cool that nope, I was driving nope, to work. It wasn't a road trip. It wasn't a road trip. Uh, so I'm, I'm, um, I'm driving to upstate New York, and I happened to pass a sign that said Beacon, which – uh, I flashed like Chuck Bartowski, right? I, I passed a road sign that said Beacon. <laughs> nice. I, fl- I flashed – and I, pu- I swear to God, I pulled over instinctively, flash, pull over and beacon. What what's what's in beacon? And then it dawned on me. I read somewhere once that there was a Doctor Who themed restaurant. Called the Pandorica in Beacon, New York, and um, we've talked about it before, uh, CJ, you and I. And, and uh, I've wanted, pardon me, I've wanted to go to this place for a few, quite a few months. So I had a few few. Uh, well, let's say I had about an hour and a half until until my next meeting. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to lunch. So I found it was only like four miles from where I was. I drove in and it's an awesome, awesome little restaurant, right? I mean, when you see the, the, the shop window, so to speak, because it's in a, a row of like little boutique sort of small town main street shops. And the window has, you know, one of the snowmen from – uh, the the season seven episode, right? Mm-hmm. Se- seven, yeah. And uh, it has the Roman helmet in it and things like that, which is very cool. You walk in and, man, you are in Doctor Who fan heaven. Everything, everything as far as the eye can see is Doctor Who. The owner was there, said hi, welcomed me, sat me down, talked for a minute about am I a Who fan, and then started walking me around showing me everything because I was the first guy there. Of quite a few more people came in while I was there, but uh, man, it was cool. They they have a you know just a single TV, big TV on the wall. They'll ask you what episode you want to watch, and they'll t- turn on Netflix and let you watch it. Oh, nice! 
Pretty cool. So with, I got like my brain's exploding, right? With what do I want to watch? And it's do you know? Well, the eleventh hour, but isn't that a little cliche? Because I'm in this place now. I'm thinking about what are they gonna? What is she gonna think of me based on my <laughs> my choice? Right. Absolutely. I would. Probably- and now I'm now I'm like uber careful. Do I go like? But the doctor dances, or do I? Do I? What do I do? This is so, first Christmas. If she's a tenant fan, and I automatically go to Matt Smith, <laughs> she's probably gonna hate me, right? So this is a. And I, I picked a uh, good man goes to war because I, I, I thought, man, everybody can get behind Demons Run. Everybody can get behind Demons Run. It's an amazing rant from the Doctor. It's an amazing show, and then you have the, the reveal of River Song. Everybody can get behind Demons Run. That's what I picked. And what? she was like, Demons Run, good episode. <laughs> and I said, a good man goes to war, and she said, Demons Run, great episode, and throws it on there. This lady knows her who. I would hope so. She is, CJ, as you would say, a true Whovian. She started talking to me about parallels between uh, Matt Smith and her favorite doctor, and I'm going to screw this up. Tra- Troutman? Is that? Troughton. Peter Patrick Troughton. Oh, uh, he's the second doctor, isn't he? So Yes, he is the second doctor. Thank what you. what what Shirley said, she just started to paralleling her favorite doctor and Matt Smith. And I, look, this couldn't have been a better lunch, uh, like a, a just a, a welcome stop in my day. And I would say two things. First, we have to go. Absolutely. It's not you're not going to hang out there all day. But like, you know, a couple there was there's a, a few people came in and the table that was closest to me. Um, they had reservations and they came in and I said, listen, guys, I'm I'm actually uh, I, I just I just happened to pass by and, and, and I came in and I asked her to put on this episode, but you guys had reservations. So if you want to watch something else and, and, the, and the the guy's like, nope, any, anything, anything with Vastra Strax, Matt Smith, I'm good to go. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, this is fantastic. But it's that it's that culture, CJ, that you talk about so frequently on the podcast of the the sort of the nerd culture is very welcoming and very and look this is a great great place um i wrote so i wrote a short article about it uh it's up on the site i posted uh the a link to the pandora's facebook page and to their website i posted a business card so that you know everybody can get the phone number whatever you want it um you know a few pictures and just a little bit about my experience i would tell you that you know, if you live anywhere, you know, within a couple hours of this place on a weekend, it's a great, great spot. Like, for instance, you could you could drive up to this place early on a Saturday. If you live in Philly, it's going to take you two and a half to two forty five to get there. Get there for lunch. Finish your lunch. You can be in New York City inside of 90 minutes. Hang out there for the day. Grab a hotel. Drive home in the morning. You'd be good to go. It'll be a nice little weekend. I would love to do that. You know what? If 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 anyone wants to come with that kind of nerd to go to Pandorica, the invitation is open. And we can schedule a group event. That'd be great. Uh, yes, yeah, so seriously, if anyone is uh, Doctor Who fans, I know you're out there. Um, if you want to come with us, we'll we'll start planning. Tweet at us uh, or, or comment or hell, most of you know us. Send us a text. Uh, I would love to figure out a, a group to go with. And you, you're right, Josh. It is part of the culture that I really do love. Um, it's what I really hope this website can help to foster is that the community is so open to just welcome people in and just say, Hey, you like the same thing I like, or Hey, would you like to know about the same thing I like? Um, you know, come sit and watch. I do have one nerdy doctor who question. I have to ask you about it. Yeah. Do they have pictures of the time that Matt Smith and Karen Gillian went to Pandorica? Do they have pictures? They, they came to the restaurant. Did no one snap a picture and put it on the wall? I have no idea. I guess I wasn't looking that I, I didn't see anything that was that would Well, show we that. have to go find out. Yeah, now That's I gotta perfect. go back. I, we like, have to go back this, for science. This place oh, science has, uh, on this on the brick on this brick wall, all of this art by a, a young local artist who does phenomenal work. I, I nearly bought a couple prints, uh one painting and a print while I was there. Wow. Uh, but I thought, you know, I was gonna buy it for Laura for her office, but I figured she'll just, you know, I'll just let her pick them when I take her up there for lunch or something. But it is close enough. Like I said, 90 minutes from the city, uh two and a half from Philly. If you live in Boston, you could be there inside of three hours. Uh, you know, less than two hours from like Hartford, Connecticut. So I you if you decided to go there on a whim and then you're like, man, I had a great time there, but I've driven all this way. What should I do? Well, 
the Foxwoods, the Mohegan Sun Casino, and Mystic, Connecticut are two hours away. Like I said, Hartford's not far. New York City's 90 minutes. Boston's three hours. It, I have this job that allows me to go all these different places, explore all these different cities, and it's great fun. But people often poo-poo that sort of, well, you know, I got to drive. But look, make you got to drive two hours to get someplace cool. Drive another 90 minutes, go someplace else cool. Make a day of it. Make a weekend of it. It doesn't cost that much. And look, this lunch certainly won't break the bank. I had a great time just hanging out there, and the my, food was good. My favorite thing about the article that you wrote says, uh, uh, this is not a food blog, so I'm not going to sit here and, and break down the food for you. Um, I thought that well, was I'm, a nice I'm, restraint I'm on your part. The nice. food was good. I said it was good. It was – the food was good. It was fresh and it was fairly priced. And I, that's, I think that's pretty much all you can – like you want to talk about food, get me offline. The, this – our site isn't that. This place is worth a visit whether or not you eat. Excellent because I don't eat anything. I am a robot. <laughs> I, did see, I did see these people order something off the menu called a Suntaran Brigade. <laughs> and uh, – it comes out, it's basically these like four potato heads. And they I think they've been hollow basically <laughs> I think she I think she basically oh, hollows them out and That's does so like an weird. inverted potato skin, but instead of taking it half and half, top and you know, long ways, she does she does it, you know, through the middle, and you end up with these potato heads that look like Santaran soldiers staring at you. That's ridiculous. It's awesome. pretty cool. Wonderful. She's got She's got fish fingers and custard. She's got all kinds of cool stuff. Oh, uh, she has like actual fish fingers and custard. No, no, no. They, they, it's like a, it's like a candied French toast stick and a custard. Okay, but, you know. All right, that that's much better. Right. Well, obviously, it's not going to be fish fingers. And custard. <laughs> that would be kind of gross. That's but, gross. But, but you know, it's 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 a cool. It's there's some clever stuff going on there. So uh, I I do want to say one thing uh, on the episode that we had with Jeff. Uh, I'm going off topic now for Pandorica. Uh, he had talked about you know games to buy and, and things to look, and uh, Black Friday rolled around, and I decided I wanted to get some video games. Uh, sadly, I didn't go on the list that uh, he had recommended, but I picked up this amazing game, and I definitely wanted to tell people about it. And we're not getting paid or anything, so just hear me out. There's a wonderful thing for the Xbox One called the Rare Replay. And it's 30 games for $30, all made by Rare. If you're not familiar with them, shame on you. We um, talked about this during E3. Did I? Then fuck me, I won't talk about it anymore, but it picked up. I'm awesome. not familiar with them. Rare Rare did a lot of games, uh, some of them by themselves, some of them in partnership with like Nintendo. They did Donkey Kong Country with Nintendo. Uh, their claim to fame for me is two games. They did Battletoads mm-hmm. for the NES and the Super Nintendo, and they did Conker's Bad Fur Day, right? which are both... If you want to actually purchase the actual cartridges, because I do, because I have those systems still, like Conker's Bad Fur Day is like 200 bucks, and Battletoads is not much cheaper. I own both of those games. I own the NES Battletoads and Cool, Conker's so Bad when Fur I Day. steal Why those don't you things sell those? from... No, those games are amazing. I'm never no going to... I'm never selling them. It Replay sounds value? like $200 for a plastic cartridge is better than having a plastic cartridge. No. False until you play Conker's Bad Fur Day, but it's but on it's, this. But it can't goodbye. you get it for this Xbox One thing and then sell your cartridge for two hundred dollars? No, because I still have my N sixty four and I'm not giving up the cartridge for Conker's Bad Fur Day. Right. If it's is the full game on this thing? Yes. It's so not like a demo. It's the it's whole a game. Collector's mindset, Josh. So you can get the whole game and get two hundred dollars for a useless piece of plastic. Not useless. I can play it in my N sixty four. Could you play it in your Xbox One? No, because I can play it on my N64. Is it in this Xbox One game? Yes. Can you play it on there? Yes. Then you're an idiot. No. <laughs> anyway. I feel you, CJ. I have all sorts of cartridges I that I, won't, get rid of it. I won't sell. I'm actually you know, looking to pick up as many old cartridges as I can. Hey, if anybody is having any sort of like garage sale, yard sale, I'm looking to pick up all your plastic cartridges so that I can sell them. All right. I will take them away from you so you don't have to sell them so that I can sell them. Wait, this is the eBay store? All right, I'd like to buy these shoes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. We just we sell we things don't, we don't, on you eBay. You can buy them from me. You, you, can, you can buy them on eBay. You can buy them on eBay. Right, but I'm here now, and I'd like to give you the money, Josh. Can I just, can I just pay for the shoes? Nope. Well, that's stupid. I, I have the money. It's, it's right here. 
And you, you have can the pay shoes for this plastic cartridge right here. Two hundred dollars. You can pay me that. So uh, I think that makes the show. I know we're running a little short, but hey, uh, I think we had a pretty good discussion. Again, huge thank you uh, to Moneybone for going ahead and leaving the comment about uh, Batman versus Superman. Uh, like I said before, guys, if you want your voice to be on the podcast figuratively or literally, it's quite easy. Uh, the best way to literally be on our show is oh, to call. Oh, it's Funny Bone, Money Bone. I got it. No, I got it now. Also, yeah, okay. next time somebody leaves a comment on the site, CJ will actually say it in a different funny voice. So it's like you're speaking to us. Sure, absolutely. Challenge accepted. I will do it. But how about this? Get your own voice on here so you don't have to listen to my ridiculousness and call 484-373-4119. Uh, you can actually leave a recording there. We will play your comment on the air unless, Ellen, you don't want your voice to be on the podcast again. That's fine. That's okay with us. You can also uh, hit us up on Twitter at that kind of nerd. And we are on Facebook at facebook.com slash that kind of nerd. We really, really want to hear from you guys about the topics that we've talked about. We want to know your impressions of Jessica Jones, uh, as we talked about last week. So continue to, to be the great, fantastic listeners that you are. Thank you so much for making us your walk around the neighborhood or your drive to work. And enjoy the rest of your day. Huzzah. not gonna get it we'll talk about privacy and stuff like that someday we really will <laughs> brian can you brian brian imagine this imagine cj sitting at the mic talking for an hour about privacy you would have people boring their ears out with their q-tips or whatever it'd be like npr i'll make it my make my own podcast next time and do it myself i don't need you i don't need you so i i think i think Josh needs to go to Thrillist headquarters and not only talk to them about their rankings of television shows and movies, but teach them numbers. Oh, okay. All right. Let's not take a shit on Thrillist. They are obviously are way better than we are anyway. God, CJ, why do you have to ruin everything? Because that's what I do on The Ruiner of Things. CJ Mellon, The Roman Ruiner. Do-do-do. <laughs>